on the topic of decentralized exchanges. Uh, what, what kind of decentralized exchanges DEXs? What are they, first of all, and what kind would you like to see built around Cardano? Yeah, so people want to create exchanges that don't have custodial risk. The point of an exchange is to build you a marketplace where bids and asks can find each other. Market People can meet and trade. You can find a price and you can get liquidity. So, you know, you got gold, you want to turn your gold into dollars. Okay, well, somebody has to create a marketplace for that. So like Coinbase is an example exactly. of a marketplace, but it's centralized. But the problem is you have custodial risk. So when you put your gold and your dollars your, or your digital representations of these things into the exchange, what if you know, Wally, he, he was, he, Eve broke up with him and now he's really sad and he, he's gone to the dark side and he's become Wally the hacker. Okay, so he can go and sneak his way in and hack into Coinbase and steal all your, your gold and your tokens. So instead of you actually being able to swap these things, you've lost all your money. And there's other problems too. Like, like let's say, you know, uh, uh, Daisy has now come in and become a regulator and said, oh, I don't like these exchanges anymore. I'm just going to shut them all down. Yeah. yeah. And then you have no access to it. So you have sovereign risk. You have the risk of threat. You have regulatory risk. You have the issue of banks maybe cutting you out. So it's been in our industry for more than 10 years. Mt. Gox was the most famous example of that. They collapsed, I believe, in 2013. And hundreds of millions of dollars was lost over the course of a while. So the point of a DEX is saying, can we do what a marketplace does, but not have Coinbase, not have a central actor run this thing? And there's a lot of problems with that because exchanges are generally uh, creatures of latency. You know, high frequency trading, for example, these things, the nanosecond, they co-locate their infrastructure with the exchange software just so they can front run orders over other people. I mean, it's crazy the amount of technology that they put in. So the traditional Wall Street version of an exchange is very centralized, very fast, very optimized, and kind of behaves by a very close set of rules. When you look at a DEX, you have to accept that you're going to have to have slightly different rules because you're operating in a global system's latency, and you're operating in a system that has uh, different behaviors. However, that said, there's a lot of great protocols that have been built for it. You know, Uniswap has kind of evolved a lot over the years, uh, and we've seen a huge competition and a lot of evolution to basically build out protocols that kind of skew some of these security problems, enjoy high liquidity, and then also have this beautiful uh, concept of openness. One of the gatekeepers to crypto when you're a cryptocurrency developer are the exchanges. I remember when we first created Cardano, you know, the, the, we, the Bitfinex guys reached out to the Cardano Foundation. They said, oh, we'd be happy to list data. And I said, okay. And they said, yeah, we want $5 million to do it. You know, so there was kind of a some Italian for go fuck yourself in those email conversations. <laughs> I think Fafula is what I said. <laughs> um, but uh, but anyway, there was the, the, that kind of back and forth happens all the time. And and because these guys are gatekeepers, they, they have this nepotistic control, information asymmetries and so forth. So having a DEX, you don't have that problem. You have open listing and you basically just put the asset into it. And if anybody wants to trade it, they will. And if it seems like it's a good idea, a natural market will form, market making will occur, and you get liquidity with it. So there's no barrier to entry for that mm -hmm. type of system. The biggest existential problem for DEXs right now is the concept of regulation. Uh, so basically, right now, when you use Binance or Coinbase or these other guys, you have to go through KYC and AML, know your customer and anti-money laundering. So basically, who are you and you know, is your money real or not, or are you a drug dealer or something? So normally you do that by saying, okay, I'm going to give them my copy of my passport and maybe they're going to request some tax records or whatever the best practices are for the particular jurisdiction. And then that exchange is liable if that's fucked up. So mm -hmm. if the government comes in and says, hey guys, uh, you know, we pull your compliance records and they find discrepancies, they'll actually put the exchange out of business or fine them very heavily. Uh, JP Morgan Chase got $19 billion in, finance, uh, in fines over the last 20 years for various compliance issues amongst other things. Uh, so it's an expensive, very difficult thing. In a DEX, it's an open system. Mm -hmm. You just have value coming in, not identity. And so all these things are trading amongst pseudonymous accounts. And so there's no notion of compliance right now for that. So a lot of regulators are coming in and saying, oh, well, this is just a cesspool for terrorism and drug dealing and bad stuff. You know, they, they're word salad of, of bullshit. But you know, it is what it is. You have to deal with these guys. And so there's been a lot of discussions of, can we take DEXs and we keep the openness mm -hmm. and keep the liquidity and no counterpart or custodial risk? And can we add some notion of compliance to that mm -hmm. in a decentralized way that doesn't require a single actor to be a gatekeeper? 
So I think actually by combining DIDs, decentralized identifiers, that's the way to do it. But it's actually the next generation of the technology is the regulated DEX. And you know who regulates that? How does that work? And so forth. But I think ultimately those are going to be the only marketplaces that uh, end up surviving in this current environment if your desire is to exit to a dollar. If you don't really care about the fiat side, like a traditional legacy currency, you, you can always do things in a shadowy, unrela- uh, unregulated way. But... I mean, it's a personal preference and a business preference. 